Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer. We are the 8th of December today. If you've been following along with the readings with your Bible, I will tell you the readings. We are going to be looking at Psalm 56 this morning, which is on page 534 of the Old Testament. And turning to the New Testament, we are looking at the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. That is on page 200 of the New Testament. We're going to be looking at chapter 2 and the first 12 verses. So if you want to pause me for a moment and mark your Bibles, then we can join back and we can say prayer together. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God of all, to you be praise and glory forever. In your tender compassion, the dawn from on high is breaking upon us to dispel the lingering shadow of night. As we look for your coming among us this day, Open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God. <coughs> oh, I beg your pardon. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So we turn to our psalm, Psalm 56. This is a psalm of David and he's given it to the leader according to the dove on far off terebinths. So I'm presuming that's a tune that he's telling the leader of the musicians that the song goes with. And it also says, a miktam, when the Philistines seized him in Gath. So this talks about his experiences when he was wandering and rushing away from King Saul. Be gracious to me, O God, for people trample on me. All day long foes oppress me. My enemies trample on me all day long, for many fight against me. O Most High, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. In God whose word I praise, in God I trust. I am not afraid. What can flesh do to me? All day long they seek to injure my cause. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They stir up strife. They lurk. They watch my steps. As they hoped to have my life. So repay them for their crime. In wrath cast down the peoples, O God. You have kept count of my tossings. Put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your record? Then my enemies will retreat on the day when I call. This I know. My God is for me. In God whose word I praise. In the Lord whose word I praise. In God I trust. I am not afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? My vows to you I must perform, O Lord. I will render thanksgiving to you, for you have, off, you have delivered my soul from death and my feet from falling, so I may walk before God in the light of life. Psalm 
This I know, that God is for me, in God whose word I praise, in the Lord whose word I praise, in God I trust, I am not afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? That is something to remember and perhaps repeat as we go through the day. In God I trust, I am not afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? And we say together, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And we turn to our reading from the letter to the Thessalonians. This is a letter that Paul wrote to the Thessalonians. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully maltreated in Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak, not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her children. So deeply do we care for you, that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. You remember our labour and toil, brothers and sisters? We worked night and day so that we might not burden any of you while we proclaim to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses, and God also, how pure, upright and blameless our contact, contact was before you, believers. As you know, we dealt with each one of you like a father with his children, urging and encouraging you and pleading that you should lead a life worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. Now is the time to wake out of sleep, for the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed, for the night is far spent let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and put on the armour of light, for the day is at hand. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh, for the night is well spent and the day is at hand. Look towards the east, O Jerusalem, and see the glory that is coming from God. Like the sun in the morning star, in the morning sky, the saviour of the world will dawn. Like rain upon the meadows, the Christ will come down upon us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, 
and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Let us pray. We pray for the day and its tasks, for the people we may meet, for the world and its needs. And thank you, Lord, for the vaccines that are now being produced, for the church and her life, that she may be a light in this darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Collect for this week of Advent 2. O Lord, raise up, we pray, your power, and come among us and with great might succour us, that whereas through our sins and wickedness we are grievously hindered in running the race that is set before us, your bountiful grace and mercy may speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory now and for ever. Amen. And shall we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I hope you have a good day. Until we meet again in prayer, God bless you.